Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation on first experiences with Stack in engineering mechanics. My name is Markus Ortava and my colleague Thomas Andretta and I recently did a bachelor thesis with a student where we discovered the plugin Stack. We already experimented with assessing engineering mechanics electronically and we already do that for uh, rather simple questions where the students probably have to calculate a few lines and then put their solutions into Moodle. We are using Moodle. And we are doing that with the variable numeric uh, question type in Moodle so that every student gets different starting values for the calculations. With the bachelor thesis that I was talking about, we wanted to take that concept one step further. At the moment, exams at our institute are divided into two parts. One part is the electronic part and the other part is a paper pencil part. And Somehow we want to experiment if this paper pencil part could be substituted by electronical questions too. Now here stack comes into play because we are dealing with rather complicated example problems that the students have to solve. For example, calculating the elastic line of a beam or uh, doing three-dimensional statics. Uh, so in any case, the student has to do a lot of calculations and typically these are done on a paper using a pencil and a simple calculator. With Stack, our hope is to also be able to transfer this paper pencil part into Moodle and then uh, be able to ask all our questions in an electronic exam. Especially in the situation that we are now, I guess, that's a very valid question we are asking ourselves. Is it possible to do a complete electronic assessment? Probably even do a complete online assessment uh, with some kind of proctoring, for example, uh, to, for the students uh, to be able to do their exams at home. So now let's look at some example problems we already played with. So let's jump into Moodle now and look at two specific problems. The first problem we are dealing with is this beam here. The beam has a Young's modulus of E and a length of 2L, is fully symmetric, uh, has a cross section with the width B and the height H, according to this cross-section figure B here, and it's supported by a fixed bearing in B and two floating bearings here in A and C. The external loads are comprised of two external moments in A and in C, and a symmetrical triangular line load with the maximum value of Q0 here just at B. That would be a typical problem the students have to solve on paper using a simple calculator, as I just explained. Now, what are the things that should be calculated? Of course, the support reactions. Um, and in this case, the differential equation of the elastic line should be used. And then the equations for the elastic line in the first interval here between A and B should be specified. And then the tilt angle in A of the beam is also to be calculated. We tell the students to pay attention to a few things. First of all, because we are showing the correct results uh, at the end of every step in the calculation in order to prevent errors carried forward. The test can only be taken in the specified direction. So going back is not possible. That's it as far as the description of the example problem looks like. It looks very similar to a paper pencil test. On the next page, we start with a free body diagram. 
you can drag the forces into the picture here and if there is no moment for example you can use this blank uh, brick to drop on the picture here then you can check and it says your answer is correct then let's go to the next page this page already uses stack the support reactions should be calculated using the elastic line the differential equation for the elastic line using the symmetry and the student should use this already calculated free body diagram the first thing to do of course is to calculate the internal moment m y of x in this interval from 0 to l so in the first section here and this uses stack as you can see now let's just type in something uh, as you know stack shows how it has been interpreted the next step would be to specify the differential equation of the elastic line so we can just put that in i'll put in zero here and the third thing are the boundary conditions and you can see here we use hints uh, in order for the student to know which boundary condition should be put into which field here. We already experimented with a better solution with decision trees at that point and we came up with a decision tree in stack that's actually able to check if a value of a boundary condition has already been entered and then only the other two boundary conditions would be valid for field two and three so using that decision tree it wouldn't be necessary to specify which boundary condition goes where but the student can just freely put it in in any of the fields here let's see we'll put in w of x is zero and at x is l there is also w of x is l is zero and the derivative of w in b is also zero and then let's check and of course you know there's the prompt that it should be verified that the entered results are interpreted expected now let's check boundary condition three is incorrect obviously because i typed it the wrong way uh, stack was expecting me to just put zero here as it says down there and that's probably something a student would do also so i guess it's better to use the decision trees that i just talked about earlier uh, in order to let the students freely put in their boundary conditions and then the student should put in the constants a c1 and c2 of the differential equation into these fields here i'll put zero everywhere and it says okay it's incorrect of course uh, because the constants have to be something else than zero and it's typed here how they should look like on the next and last page and question the student has to specify the elastic line in this interval and also calculate the tilt angle at a using the second equation that's shown here as a correct previous solution i'll also put zero here and that's actually it I can finish the attempt submit all and finish and i can see what i did wrong all along the way now that would be one quite simple problem when it's given in a paper pencil exam there are more complex problems and we are still working on transforming them to moodle using stack we also still don't have a feedback of the students because it was planned to use these stack questions uh, in a self-assessment test that students do prior to the written exam but as the lockdown came before we could do the next exam uh, we also couldn't do the self-assessment test with these questions now i want to show you a second example and that's uh, three-dimensional statics a pole is attached to a five-fold bearing uh, that's in the origin a here and it's loaded by a force f here acting into the positive y direction in b and uh, by its own weight and uh, there's also a rope from d to c here this would also be a typical problem for a paper pencil test 
in the given coordinate frame, the student would have to calculate the position vector of the center of gravity, the magnitude of the force in the rope, and the vectors of all support reactions in A. In this case, uh, we decided to do a few free body diagrams and let students decide which one could be the correct one. I'll just pick A here. Then uh, the second thing would be, and here that's stack again comes into place because often we need uh, the students to put in the vectors. And as you know, that's not possible with the standard Moodle uh, question types. So we are using stack for that uh, too. And in this, in this case, the vector of the center of gravity should be put in. I'll put in one, two, three. And as far as I'm concerned, this is way easier for the students uh, to put in the vector here because that's something they know from paper pencil tests instead of asking for all the different components of a vector. Now let's check. It should be a function of A because we have all the dimensions in A here. Okay, so let's go to the next page. Again, the correct answer is shown here. The plan is also uh, for the future to store the students' answers into arrays uh, in stack and then avoid errors carried forward by using students' answers in the subsequent calculations. Uh, that's something we're still working on. Then the student has to calculate the magnitude of the force along the rope and specify all the vectors of the support reactions in A, which is also quite neat because the student can again put in vectors here instead of putting in three different components. That's our experience so far. Of course, we've got a long way to go still. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I'm looking forward to your questions and to hopefully some discussions afterwards. Thank you.